<clears throat> hey gang, got a Powers Commission here. I'm gonna be inking it with my, these are both the same brush, it's just the tip on the inside, uh, the Kuretake brush, brush pen. Um, I think I'll be mostly quiet while I'm making this. But I'll talk a little bit about what I'm thinking. First, I gotta put my right glasses on. Okay, usually I like to start with just the outlines of the bodies. First, I'm keeping in mind in the back of my head that this is gonna be all black in the background. Um, so typically, a lot of times, I'll just kind of ink like this, like kind of cutting. I'm inking from the outside in. Just kind of cut away at the shapes. Um, but for the sake of this, I'm going to just do a regular outline to talk about how I place my brushes, strokes and stuff. Uh, so I'm imagining that the light's coming down this way. So then if this wasn't a background, the line work would accentuate the light coming from above by getting thicker as it goes down below. I leave this little open spot here because it helps give a sense of a connection between his forearm and his bicep there in the jacket. Darker at the bottom, later at the top. I'm gonna have to switch out this brush tip in a bit. It's getting beat up, as you can tell. But, I mean, this has lasted me months. These uh, Kurataki brush pens, you see my videos where I just go at it. I can ink the whole thing with just this brush pen. And uh, it's so durable. Or durable. I'm a... Uh, Finally setting things up so that I can listen to music while I do these videos. I had to figure out a little system with my headphones. Um, because if you hear any of the music I'm listening to, I can get tagged on YouTube and the video might be uh, might be taken down depending on who's looking at the copyright. But I listen to music a lot when I work. It's pretty motivational to me. Right now I'm listening to... Uh, Block Party. Usually I just wait till the very end to fill in these black areas. <clears throat> yeah, this brush tip is doing okay, but I'm gonna retire it before it gets any more rough on the edges. calculating my black and white spotting here. So this is gonna be black in the background. So I think I'm gonna just leave that open and I'll make this black, but just a little bit of highlight. I imagine he's got either a leather jacket on or jacket with some reflection. I really should get in the habit. You can see it's still wet. I should get in the habit of inking the faces first when I'm working on a commission. Um, while I talk a lot about working with your mistakes and um, 
you know, if the line is sloppy or just came out bad or something, you could typically work around it. Faces are harder. If you screw up on a face, there's, you know, you can add more shadows. There's a certain amount of stuff you can do, but it's hard. It's hard to fix crooked eyes and stuff like that or the occasional bad drawing. And, uh, you know, obviously I wouldn't want to do the faces last and realizing, oh, crap, that sucks. And then, you know, uh, you know, have a finished piece that I kind of have to throw away because the face is bad. That's never happened yet, but got to be prepared. Let me zoom in here and see how this looks. Yeah, let's try to do that. Also, if you're tuning in, you know, check out my Kickstarter for the After Realm number three. And that, uh, coming out through Kickstarter, and if you're not a Kickstarter person, it'll just be in comic book stores through Image Comics. I like choices. Um, that'll be out in September, along with the Powers trade, and the big graphic novel. Try some negative space on the side of his uh, jacket here. Let's see how it feels. So, uh, not to sound too braggy or arrogant, um, but if you're looking at the way I lay down the lines and you're like, whoa, he just, uh, just seems to plop them down really quickly. Um, I do. And part of that is my process is, uh, there's a voice in the back of my head somewhere that tells me just to lay the line down a certain way um, and to do it quickly. I don't know why. Um, there's something about the energy of a quick line versus an overly thought, super cautious line. Um, I prefer the, the one that just has a little more life to it, which is usually the quicker line for some reason. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're gonna hear the neighbor kids playing. They're so funny. Um, but anyway, that, that whole thing with the line that I'm talking about, like just doing it very quickly and, you know, that just comes out of 30 years of practice, something like that. Yeah, I guess it's close to 30 years of inking now at this point in my life. So don't feel too, um, it's not, it's not like unobtainable, you know, it's just if you, if you make a life out of it, this is not that hard. I think that's a very long rambly way of just saying, you know, practice, practice, practice. It's funny as these kids playing next door, um, it's not a bad thing, but uh, they can get like really loud and crazy. Like this one little boy likes to yell, kill, 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 die, 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 die. <laughs> and uh, there's been like 
blood-curdling screams from these kids. Where we have to look out the window just make sure that <laughs> something's not going on. Um, the downside of that is something ever bad did happen, we would just be like, ah, those crazy kids just yelling for help and murder. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but... Yeah. One day the game was just die, die, die. I'm not exactly sure how I want to handle the darkness in his uh, shirt yet, or his pants, because of the background here is going to be mostly black. So let's just, uh, I call it like coloring book style, where I just kind of ink in the um, the outlines. And then afterwards, I'll decide how do I want to... You know, show his uh, pant leg and where I want to place the black and contrast. Yeah, I mean, it's just all going to be black in here, so. Whenever I'm doing like folds and clothes, and back of my head, I'm always trying to remember Dave Johnson. Uh, I just love the way he does fabrics and, and folds. Um, and I can't quite, I can't quite do it like he does. I can't quite figure it out. And it's just kind of like zigzaggy, watery V-shaped patterns. Um, like, I could see it. I see what he's doing. But it's hard for me to actually figure it out. To, to do it in a way that feels natural and, and right for me. Broken brick. Oh, I'll do the city stuff last. Um, yeah, let's have fun with Dina. Her head's a little small. Uh, I think I can make it a little larger without, without getting crazy, like redrawing the whole head or anything. I think I just need to give her just a little more lower face. It's funny how you develop a sort of instinct uh, for what's going to work and what doesn't. Oh, uh, yeah. 
sometimes I just it's just a feeling in your bones and I guess it's really in the back of your head and you have all these lessons you've taught to yourself so it's not like a sort of like a psychic thing or anything it's like your subconscious is telling you the lines that you've set up are going to work or they're not um I feel better than a 50% chance that this face will work really well let's see let me wipe off my brush a little bit Being a little too precious here, I don't like that. Okay, okay, not bad, not bad, I'm happy. Ah, yeah, that worked out. I was a little nervous. Left a little gap there. Eh, I don't think it works though. So I'm gonna close it up. The kind of negative space is interesting when it works and when it doesn't. It's one of those things I don't have a full handle on yet. And uh, I kind of like that though. I mean, it makes it interesting. I'm discovering stuff, new stuff as I go along. Let's just be solid black. There you go. It's not going to be black behind them, behind her. So I'm going to do a little bit of feather rendering there because she's like really stretching her jacket as she's reaching. I don't do too much rendering anymore. I used to do everything with like a lot of um, it's black back here. So like if this is the outside of his pants, I would typically have done like a lot of that, which still really works. 
Um, but I don't know. I've gotten to a place where, where less is more. So doing just a little bit here and there goes um, a long way. And it's funny because that's something I kind of picked up from Taki. And, and Taki picked up doing these just a few rendering lines from looking at my work where I was doing a lot of render lines. So it's funny how we bounce back and forth off each other like that. All right, let's get back to some interesting stuff. Yeah, ground's gonna be all black here. I think I was originally intended to do like a double jacket, like she had uh, her hoodie and a jacket. It's two separate things, but. I don't think it quite pulled it off, so I'm going to make it just one, one jacket instead of a hoodie underneath the jacket. Maybe I'll have to just call Dave <laughs> or do a video interview thing with him. Walk me through these fabric folds. I've been studying them all my life and I can make them look like fabric folds, but he's got a real dynamic way of doing it. And I just love it. Walker's foot or shoe down here. This is all gonna be in black. So I gotta make sure it's oop, make sure his shoe is readable. Should have drawn gloves on them because you know they don't want to taint the evidence.
I mean, as far as I'm concerned, like the hard work here is done. The body of this is all finished. Um, so the rest of it is about like the building and this background here. Uh, so I'm gonna give you a wider shot. With the brush, I'm kind of moving it like in this herky jerky and pressing down a little bit harder in some spots and others. And that gives it this kind of chunky line like a destroyed brick wall would, would have. I am not going to do all the mortar. You know, a lot of people will just do those Frank Miller mortar lines. Uh, I almost never do that just because it is incredibly time consuming. It's worth it. It's worth it. But... Sometimes you gotta move on, you know? You gotta move along. <laughs> I also like creating these layers of black to white to black. So the foreground is gonna be all black ground, black floor. This mid ground with the wall is gonna have this open white area and then black again. <clears throat> Do this wall splatter. Typically what I do is like this outline that I first did is just a guide. So I can add, you know, other details. You don't have to be a slave even to your own sketches and layouts. I like to think of each step that I do as improving on the last. So like when I drew the underside of this in light pencil, um, I then went over it in darker pencil uh, and then with that pen to draw all the outlines, it really helps me like just bring it all together and each step fixes it up a little bit. And so like this too, it was a really basic blood shape, but now I'm adding these kind of splatter defining shapes to it, you know? a weird little tangent here but I'll survive um, also when I'm drawing interior pages I have a series of shortcuts to help me with all my deadlines and stuff and one of those is I have several different pre-drawn brick walls uh, various Oops, I missed the thing there. Various patterns and textures. And um, what I do is, not for a major part of the drawing like this, but like for background stuff, um, I will just drop the brick pattern into the background digitally, even if I drew the page um, traditionally. Uh, and it just saves a lot of time. Uh, I have city backgrounds like that as well. So say if this is a panel and Walker's going to say a lot up here and I know that whatever background I draw is going to disappear, but it still needs a background. I can throw in something I previously drawn, previously published, touch it up, change some of the lighting, maybe flip it or something, add a little to it. Your eye doesn't read it as something you've seen before. Um, and it's covered up by the word balloons. So, um, it's a, it's a good way to add work and backgrounds um, that you know are going to get covered, but you're not really losing time on it. Um, you have to be careful with that kind of stuff, though, because overuse, I'm sure there are some one or two backgrounds you've seen over and over again. In fact, there's one or two that like appear on the first Powers cover, the very, very first Powers cover. I think the second, maybe third issue. Um, and I've used that a lot on purpose because I felt like those shots became subconsciously an iconic part of Powers. Um, you see it a lot in the inside front cover of a lot of the trades. Um, yeah, I mean, these are just sort of my own 
theories and uh, what word am I looking for? Uh, just the, you know ways I've developed about going to do stuff and it's a combination of saving time and maintaining artistic integrity at the same time. I'm all for cutting a corner as long as that corner isn't at the cost of the final product. And if I'm going to be honest, like, uh, hold on a second, I got to count every other brick to make sure that <laughs> I've got the pattern going right. Uh, that would look weird there. Get away with it here. Um, some of the saving of backgrounds and reusing them um, is also just an energy thing. Um, so sometimes I probably shouldn't drop in a background on something. But I do anyway because I am, I say I've been working for most of the day and I'm freaking beat and I'm near the end of a page and it's not quite finished but to finish drawing complicated cityscape in the background could just you know add hours to the page and I'm just tired and done and physically exhausted and it's just time to move on so sometimes I'll use that and uh you know I've got mixed feelings sometimes I feel like it's gone too far sometimes just wish I had the actual energy to just finish it the old-fashioned way but, you know, uh, you got to take each day at a time. I really enjoy just freehanding a city too. Like, I'm not doing any perspective lines here. There's a lot of kind of guesswork. I'm just laying down layers of floors and windows. Cover up that little line there. See, and this just kind of indicates building shape, some light coming up over the edges. I recently did a uh, Frank Miller homage piece, uh, Dark Knight, and when I was copying these buildings in there, I noticed he does a lot of like rounded shapes at the top of buildings but they don't really read as exactly round. I'm talking about Frank Miller. Um, they actually read as little tiny 
just parts of the building that that, that cityscape on top of the city and um yeah it always kept things like kind of 90 degree angles and stuff but after doing that piece i was like oh yeah no top of buildings need a little more detail than i've been giving them as far as um there's little rounded corners and just kind of weirdly gives more mass i'm talking about like up here like this is kind of like flexed out a little bit here Um, if this is a printed piece, I would tighten it up, you know, for the windows and stuff. But, um, you yeah, know, this is a, a commission sketch. And I frankly enjoy uh, little tiny brush lines that poke out in the wrong places. <laughs> like that little edge here. I mean, that makes, you know... Right here, that makes that building feel so much more real to me than uh, a, a perfectly straight edge. Just gonna add some other windows in here. And then these windows, I'll just end up doing uh, blacking some of them out and keeping some of them. <clears throat> I like these little dents into the wall. Very much a Mignola thing. It's kind of butterfly shaped chunks and it shows that the light is coming from above because uh, the shadow is dug into the into the brick or it could indicate if all the lighting was different elsewhere like if they're being lit from below then this would look like it's a chunk sticking out of the brick but because the light is come you know if it was a chunk sticking out of the brick and the lights come up here it's going to leave um, a shadow like that whereas the light is coming from above here so that means it's a divot um, and i think your brain uh, subconsciously fills that information in for you on these things really close to being done here let me do dinas five and pen should have drawn their guns and pen too because you get like a nice edge but the problem with the, that brush pen that I work with is it's so versatile, I can sometimes use it at times I don't even really want to. <laughs> All right, more bricks. These bricks are really uneven too. Sometimes when I fuck up like this and I have them unevenly spaced, then I'll make all the bricks super uneven as well. Um, uh, this is a bad example of that, so I shouldn't even bother. <laughs> it's going to be hard for me to keep track of the pattern, the every other brick pattern with that, all this blood splatter in the way. Let's just do this and see what happens. Yeah, I can get away with it. It's getting lost down here, but that's all right. I'm going to make a lot of dirt down here. Brush here is starting to run out of ink, which is good for the dry brush part. Look at this. That's nice. 
Dry brush work is, uh, it can be kind of a crapshoot. Like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, I think that's good. Back this up. Take a bite of apple. Need my energy. Time for some ink. This ink bottle is super old. I haven't had Bombay Black Indian ink in here for years. I use my own ink, which is just called Talons. It was originally like a tattoo ink. But, um,. I think Canson started bottling it. Um, but my bottle of ink is so old because it's a giant, giant bottle. I think the ink started to die. You can see through it a little bit here, whereas normally when I first started using it, it was just black, 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 black. But it also flowed really well. It wasn't like a thick, lacquery kind of black. It was just super smooth and everything. So yeah, gotta get me some new ink, but I'm cheap. <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna leave the bottle out to like leave the cap off and let it dry. See if that helps so then I don't have to spend money. <laughs> I enjoy cheap art. I don't know why. Cheap art supplies. It feels like it keeps me humble or something or or from falling under the delusion that somehow the the tools are doing the work. I don't know. Could just because I grew up poor and I have an appreciation for uh, the not so fancy. I like the lowbrow. This is another thing that, and I talk about this in every video that I record. The filling in of black, um, so time consuming. This drawing is done. And if it was digital, it'd be really done because I just, with a single click, fill in the black here. This is rewarding artistically, you know, filling in the black, but time-wise, time, time, time. It's tough when you're a comic book artist with deadlines and multiple projects, like I see everything in terms of time, you know? Oh, I should go for a walk today. Ah, that's 20 minutes, which wouldn't be so bad if I didn't have to do this other thing that would take 20 minutes and this other thing that takes 20 minutes and it adds up. I almost look at things and work in terms of time as opposed to money that makes any sense. You can always make money, you can't make time. I shouldn't say you can always make money because I can jinx that. almost slipped and went into his jacket there. This brush chip is like all funky, so I gotta be really careful in these details. If I was smart, I would have just switched my brush to that Kurtaki brush pen for these little details, getting in close to the lines here. But I'm being a little daring.
All right, I'm gonna get my light box dirty here, but I don't care. It's easy to wipe off. I'm gonna leave a little bit of dry brush there at the bottom. lower the light box light so I can see this a little better. Put the ink bottle away for now. Give me a second to clean off the brush tip. I keep a giant bottle of water, like a big, yeah, big ass bottle of water next to me where I clean up my brushes real quick. So to finish this up here, I gotta be careful because there's still a lot of like wet ink. But I think over here is all good, so I'll put my hand here without worrying about smearing anything. This is gonna get tricky because this brush is out of just about out of ink. And so is this one, but I don't want to stop to refill these right now. As far as refilling these, at the, it depends on how much you're, you're working, you know, um, but it's not too often. It's not a pain in the ass. It's just sometimes, like right now, it's just inconvenient. In fact, I checked my ink levels before I started this, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get through it. I figured I'll have to refill them, like, right after I do this. Got to be careful of wet ink. So another reason why we wear this glove is if I do come across wet ink, if it's light enough, the glove will actually just absorb the ink instead of smearing it. Feels like she should have some heavy shadow here. Yeah, that feels better. I like it. Yeah, it generally feels like it just needs some contrast back here. There you go.
Got a little smear here. I cover some of it up. There you go. Fill in some of these windows. And uh, kind of done. I'm actually gonna look at this. Uh, I'll put it aside, take a look after lunch. I feel like I wanna add in more shadows. Like this is calling for some shade. Um, but maybe in a couple other spots too, actually. Definitely here. That looks good. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna let this dry up. I think I might do some more rendering around the, her legs and stuff, but we'll see. Um, I'll post the original here when it's all done. And I gotta do some blue stuff, um, some blue shading on it with a Copic. Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is a little long. <laughs> uh, take care.